Hey everyone, Jeff with Master Medics here. Thank you so much for checking out this quick little video on anterior myocardial infarctions. This is gonna be an interesting one. It's gonna be a common patient that you're going to see in the pre hospital setting, so it's definitely a good one to understand. So let's get into this one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that way you don't miss any of our new videos and you can also attend our live videos by being a subscriber to our YouTube channel and finding out the details there. So let's do the anterior myocardial infarction. The anterior myocardial infarction has a few pieces that could possibly creating this problem, okay? And so the vessel that's going to be affected typically is going to be this guy right here, okay? This is called the LAD or the left anterior descending, okay? Left anterior descending artery. That's what this guy is here. And obviously has a couple branches, the D1 branch and the D2 branches and so on and so forth. And so lots of things that are going on here, obviously feeding a very large portion of the kind of the anterior portions of the heart, which is not surprising itself. And so when we see this particular vessel that's being affected, we often see some pretty severe symptoms. So first off, we often see a very high blood pressure. Okay, and we're gonna explain why in a little bit here. But yeah, we often have a very high blood pressure. We also have often a high heart rate or a tachycardia that goes along with this as well as a compensating factor. Again, we'll explain that just shortly here. We also obviously have chest pain, which is gonna be the main problem here. This is ischemic chest pain. We often will have shortness of breath with this particular patient. And we also could possibly have pulmonary edema. Okay, pulmonary edema. Lots of really concerning things going on with this patient. In fact, this particular patient, this is the highest mortality rate of, uh, of all myocardial infarctions is an infarct to this left anterior descending. Uh, it's the most common and most um, most dangerous to get or the highest mortality rates other than the left main coronary artery, which we'll talk about in a later video. Okay, so that is uh, kind of the, the beginning portions of this. So let's look at the ECG itself. So the anterior leads are going to be V3 and V4. Those are the most anterior leads that are going to be looking at the very front facing of this heart. Now let's look at those leads. So V3 is here. Okay. There's a QRS, there's a QRS. Okay, I slowed this heart rate down a little bit just so you can see everything. V4, okay, very obvious ST elevation. So we have to go by the isoelectric line, which is here, and count at least one to two mils, depending on the literature that you're reading, uh, one to two mils to determine if there's ST elevation. There's about four mils of ST elevation here. So that's a positive sign of an anterior MI. And it looks like it's isolated. So you don't see ST elevation in five and six or two and one, which is these ones are more septal. These ones are gonna be more lateral. This is also lateral. So nothing's indicating that we have anything other than elevation of V3 and V4, which means we probably have a blockage low enough that we're not affecting the left circumflex um, or possibly the, um, the septal branches of the, the left corner or left anterior descending artery. So a few things to kind of take in consideration here, but we do have positive signs of an anterior MI, isolated anterior MI here in this particular case, okay? So that's good news and that's the positive signs that you can see here. Now, let's go into the pathophysiology of this particular guy. Well, what's going to happen is that we're going to have a pretty substantial decrease in our stroke volume. And as you probably know, we have three things that are going to manage our stroke volume. We're gonna have a preload, okay? We're gonna have an afterload, and we're gonna have our contractility. Okay, so we have our contractility. Now, here's the big thing with this, is that we have a major decrease in contractility. When we lose that left anterior descending artery, we start to leave a lot of this area, in particular, is going to be without the ability to contract, okay? Sometimes the septal wall loses its contraction ability, sometimes the lateral wall. In this particular case with the isolated anterior MI, basically the front portion of this wall 
of the ventricle is going to be affected. It's not going to have good contractility. And that's a large portion of that ventricle. And so we're going to have a major decrease in contractility. Now, what our body is going to do in order to compensate for that decrease, decrease in contractility, because without that ability, there's no way to pump blood throughout the aorta and throughout the rest of the body. And our body recognizes that. It goes, hey, we need blood now or we're going to die. So what it does is essentially it's going to increase our preload by causing systemic vascular resistance. Okay, it's gonna increase systemic vascular resistance. What that is is essentially the squeeze. It's gonna cause vessel squeeze of most vessels in order to try and improve our blood pressure, improve our preload. Now by doing that, it's really gonna be a problem because by doing that, we're actually going to be increasing our afterload because if we are causing vessel squeeze, that means that we're going to create more back pressure back towards that left ventricle, okay? Because that means that we have to push harder to try and get through the aorta and through the rest of the body if we're gonna create the systemic vascular resistance. Not a great thing for a ventricle that's already lost its ability to contract really well. So that could be really, really dangerous. We're gonna talk about that in the treatment. And so that is kind of the, the compensating factor here. We're also gonna have an increase in our heart rate Sorry, there we go. We're gonna have an increase in our heart rate as a compensating factor as well. That's why we see those tachycardias. That's why we see those elevated uh, blood pressures all because of the increase in systemic vascular resistance to improve preload, improve blood pressure, and try and maintain a better cardiac output so that way we have good beat blood pressures and you know we don't have hypoperfusion. But eventually, they're going to falter themselves and they're gonna damage this ventricle even further because of the massive increases in afterload and it, this ventricle is just not going to be able to contract and it's going to overwork itself okay so that's why we see those elevated blood pressures and elevated heart rates now what are we going to do to combat this as a pre-hospital professional as a paramedic or as a flight paramedic depending on what you're doing right now well the key here is that we need to try and decrease this afterload a bit okay we need to give this ventricle a break is essentially that what we're going to do. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give nitro. Okay. Nitro is going to be one of the first things that we're going to give this particular patient. What that's going to do is going to decrease systemic vascular resistance, which is going to decrease this afterload and give this ventricle a break. That is a really key piece in combating this or combating this anterior MI. And we're probably going to go high, high doses on this. So often with sprays, that's great. It'll start to relieve some of that pressure. But one of some of the other big things that it's going to do is it's going to, again, help these coronary vessels dilate a little bit. And that's a big thing that we want right now as well, is we want to try and dilate those coronary blood vessels, see if we can get some blood past that clot and eventually reperfuse some of these areas. So that's kind of a bonus with nitrogen. Now, often you're going to go from the spray to an infusion, okay? And some protocols are saying, like, we're seeing 300 micrograms per minute in some protocols. So we can go really, really high, and you can start as low as 10 if you want it. And so, but we're seeing really, really high ones. And with patients that are really, really sick, we often see these really high infusion amounts with its anterior MI, uh, especially if they're really, really high anteriors. By high, I mean that this clot is kind of high up in this, uh, this LAD which would tell that we have a large portion of that anterior facing uh, heart that's going to be affected, okay? And so that is basically what we're gonna be doing with this anterior MI in order to combat this. There's other things that we're gonna to use to treat this patient, but the main one that we're gonna to go to in here is going to be your nitro. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out and put in the comments down below. We would love to hear from you. If you're interested in these types of videos, if this was really helpful for you to learn as a EMT or a paramedic student, we would love for you to join us as a Master Your Medics member. If this is the stuff that helps you learn, we would love to see you jump into a three-day free trial right now. If you hate it, you don't have to stay. You can cancel any time. If you love it, you can stay as long as you'd like. We would love to work with you in our live videos that we do three times a week, as well as releasing these types of videos all the time exclusively for our members. So hopefully you're excited about that and you take us up on that offer. Okay, see you soon.